here we have the oscilloscope connected with the waveform coming in on channel 1 and we want to adjust the display we can move this up and down this adjustment sets the zero position for the trace and this one just sets the volts per division to expand the time base we have this one here and we can even move the, the trace about as well sometimes when we switch on we might have some strange waveforms like this we're not quite sure what's going on and there's something provided called auto set if you always press auto set it will look for the waveform and display uh, in the most convenient form so we now have a waveform if I want to measure the waveform I can use a cursor function if I press cursor it's going to measure what it does it puts a line up here that's a Y on the Y axis so it's looking on the vertical scale that line there says it's at 880 millivolts if I move this I can move that line up and down all I'm doing is I'm lining up so I can perhaps read where the top of my waveform is do you notice I've got two cursors and they're both moving together if I select just Y1 I can move Y1 independently select Y2 I can move Y2 independently and what I can do there here Y1 Y2 is actually measuring the voltage between here and here so I've got a measurement of the peak to peak voltage <coughs> what I might want to do is also measure the time so what's the period of my waveform so if I select going to, into the X my cursors are now X1 and I can move that along and uh, maybe I find a point there where it crosses the axis X2 I adjust to be where it crosses the axis again so it's one period and it's measuring the time x1 minus 620 microseconds x2 is zero pretty much and the difference it comes out as 620 microseconds and even calculates that as a frequency it's not measuring frequency it's just telling you what this period is as frequency so what can be useful here is if, if I've got a like a transient type response I can move a one cursor to say a reference point say where it crosses a line and then I can move this along and this is telling me the relative time between this point and this point if I go back to the Y waveform I could put Y1 maybe at that zero point again then Y2 could be moved to say another point here and maybe if you look between the two so we, we try and see where the crossover point is and I'm measuring X and Y the same <coughs> now I can take the cursors off powerful thing about the digital storage oscilloscope is you can actually look at the waveform and it can do some calculations for you if you press the measure, measure display it comes up with a number of factors. It assumes your waveform is periodic and on that basis it looks for the peak to peak voltage. It looks for the average voltage which for a sine wave should be pretty much zero. It looks for the frequency, duty cycle etc. And each of these you can actually program. So if I take the last one rise time I can actually change it so to say measure time select it and I can go through this menu here and I perhaps want to say measure volts RMS previous menu now is displaying the volts RMS of this waveform 3.2 peak to peak point 9.4 <coughs> one thing that will be important in first year labs is triggering if we look here the waveform is coming along there's a line here this point here actually indicates the trigger point we have a trigger menu here, we look at the menu, it says it's triggering on an edge, if I look at that I can change it to pulse, to video, we want an edge it's using channel 1 
as a source. If I go to channel 2, there's no signal there, so the trigger is lost and the waveform is unstable. So I go back to channel 1. And what it does, it, it looks for, if I say slope coupling, it's looking for the waveform going from negative to positive. And what it's looking at, if this point here is my threshold point, it's looking for the waveform to go from negative to positive. As it goes through that voltage, it triggers the wave. This, I can adjust my threshold point. You can see the threshold here is coming down. It gets further and further. Eventually, if it's below the waveform, I lose my trigger point. So we need to have the trigger point somewhere on the waveform. We're going to adjust it to line things up if that's necessary. Now again with uh, the mode of triggering, at the moment I'm, what, I'm in what is known as auto mode. If I go to normal, then as I move my trigger point, it will only trigger if it finds a trigger point. So if I go outside the waveform, it's actually stopped working. If I take this away, there's no signal. It's actually frozen. So put it back on. I'll do run stop. What's it doing? Triggered. It's waiting for a trigger. I have to move my trigger point up till it finds a waveform. Okay. So the run stop there. You run stop. You can st stop things and freeze the trace. If I take this away, I've captured the waveform. I press run again, run stop, it starts running. Now it's waiting for a trigger and it hasn't got one. So if I put that on, you'll see it captured it and it started sweeping. That's in normal mode. What I might also want to do, auto, normal. I might want to do a single. If I press single, I take the waveform and press single. It won't do anything, well, it will just trigger once. The minute I do that, and you'll see it, it triggers at that point there. In fact, it's recording data until it re re receives the trigger. Once it's received the trigger, it displays all the data. And I can actually move this around and actually have a look at the waveform before and after the trigger point. And you can see as I connect it to this, the oscilloscope, there's a bit of glitching because as we make the connection, but then it started up. So that can be useful if you're looking at a single waveform or a transient response, you can trigger it and use a single slope and you've captured the waveform.